you reconcile issue if there is already a broken relationship? At times, many people, they make the mistake to go immediately with the heart and start to talk about the issue. I have been such a mistake. It doesn't work. Rather, you are going to create more wound, more trouble. The first thing you do when someone offends you is go to God and ask God to heal you of the heart. You talk to God about the issue and so that you can also see whether you were at fault in that issue. Ask God to heal you that you have in heart by your brother and your sister and you need healing. Open up to him and when God heals you, now the second thing you are going to do is to start to pray for the person that offended you. For God to touch his heart because you are going to make peace with him. I've done this. People have hurt me. And I went to God. I said, yeah, these are people I love so much. But I still love them. But anytime I want to walk in love, I remember their heart. I want healing. And God has healed me. And I start, start to pray for the people. One day I was praying for someone that hurt me. And the Lord showed me. He said, don't only look at the bad side of him. But remember also the good side. Always remember the good side when the enemy tempts you to look only on the bad side. And when I start to look at the good side of him, I found out a man that I love. Finally, woman that I love, that there are things they have contributed in my life that nobody can ever do. And that helped in healing my heart and my womb. You see, when you have prayed for the person and you are already healed of the heart, it's now time for confrontation. When you are not going for confrontation, you are not going for confrontation or defensive or offensive, but you are going for restoration for the love of God in your heart because you have been healed of the wound. You know that he is not a problem. She is not a problem. But the enemy and God have taken care of that one. All you are not going. I want us to continue from where we started. I want us to show you some points on how to do this practically. I've said one. Pray for the heart. Pray for the person. The Bible said in the book of Philippians, in all things, pray. Philippians 4 verse 6. But Jesus himself, in the book of Matthew chapter 4, 5, let's go there. He talks about praying for those who hurt you, those who persecute you. Say pray for them. The moment you step into the word of God, you see that the word of God is complete because the reason we cannot restore things by ourselves is that we try to do it outside the word of God. But when we follow the steps of the word of God, we find out that restoration and reconciliation and restoration is possible. When you have prayed for the person, the moment you start to pray for the person, God will go ahead of you and start to put things in order. Hallelujah. Matthew 5, 44. He said, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that cause you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and send that rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. And if you salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans do so. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Say so pray for them, those who persecute you. You know why? Because God wants you to reconcile with them. He wants you to make peace with them. But you cannot make it by yourself. As you start to pray for them, they are human beings. Their heart is with God. God will go before you and start to talk to them. God will go before you and start to soften your heart. And after you have prayed for them, the next step is make peace. How do you make peace? You make peace by action. This is where 
many Christians, they miss it. You have hurt someone. Don't just say, I don't want to talk about it because the more we talk about it, the more we bring up the issue. No. The Bible says, talk about it, but in love. Many of us, we make the mistake to talk about it when the wound is still there. I have done that. It will create more trouble. But every day, we learn. Every day, we learn. And I'm also done praying for the person that is a good to talk about me. Going to him. And he was still hot, but I could listen to him because I knew I was already healed. And at the end of the whole thing, we came together. So I know what I'm telling you. I have gone to a heal issue without being healed. It created more trouble. I've also come to heal an issue after being healed. At the end, there was reconciliation and there was restoration. Amen. Go to the person. Let's see. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and thou remember that thy brother had all against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way first. Be reconciled to thy brother, that thy come and offer thy gift. Many people have asked me this question, Pastor, why am I suing seed to different ministries? Why am I paying my tithe and I'm not seeing blessing? And this always pumped into my mind. You have a problem with anybody. Yes, this sister offended me. I said the Bible says, don't give all those tithes and offering until you reconcile. Oh, but you don't know what it did to me. Yes, I know what the Bible says. I'm not the one that sent you. If you ignore what God says and want the blessings of God, it's not going to work. Bible said, drop that time, drop that offering, go and reconcile that issue because where there is strife, there is much evil work. Where there is strife, God is not there and God is not going to bless where he is not. This is why many Christians are missing it. They ignore the word of God, but they want the blessings of the word of God. It doesn't work like that. There are many people dying of strife. Men of God, women of God, many Christians. People offend them. They don't want to talk about the issue, but inside them, they are dying of that heart. When they see the person, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk with the person. And they struggle in life, and it's called that witchcraft is attacking them. It's not witchcraft. Just obey the word of God. Go and reconcile with your brother. Go and reconcile with your sister, and bring your offering, and God will bless you. Amen? Let's go for that. And when you go for the reconciliation, you see, I thought last week I said, the way you know that you have not really reconciled with someone is through your conscience. At times many of us will say, I have forgiven, I have forgotten. But the moment we hear that person's name, you see, inside us we start to boil again. The Holy Ghost is telling you, you have not forgiven. That forgiveness is in your head, not in your heart. Because the Bible says, only those that forgive from their heart receive the blessings of the Lord. The person that offended you, if they talk about the person, how do you react inside? If you see the person, can you freely embrace the person? Can you freely communicate with the person? If you cannot do that, you have not forgiven the person. And that is why there is struggle. If you have really forgiven the person, you can freely flow with such a person. That is when you know that you are here of that God and blessings will overflow. When you go to reconcile, what do you do? Listen. I have fallen into this trouble and I go to reconcile and I be the one that talk all. Oh, because I want to tell the person how it pains me. But the Lord said, no, that is not how to do it. If you are the one that initiated the reconciliation, when you go there, listen to the person. Let the person be able to express his or her heart. There are things that will happen to people not because they want to do it, but because there was condition that was not favorable at that particular time. And all those factors added to the explosion that took place between you and him. And if you are able to listen to him or her to be able to explain to you the condition, his state or her state of mind, when that issue takes place, you will find out that he or 
because she was not a problem, but the circumstances that the enemy brought created that situation so that two of you can fall into that cage of strife. You see, when we listen, we are able to have compassion. When we listen, we are able to have mercy. And when we give mercy to other people, God will also give mercy to us. Some people will say, no, I don't want to. This is what the word of God says. Yes, I have been in that class before. Thank God for studies. I found out that the word of God can say something, but God himself can do something with his mess. I can give you an example. The word of God said in the book of Old Testament, when a man or woman, when a woman is caught in adultery, stoned her to death. And when they brought her to God, what did God say? Daughter, I condemn you not. But sin no more. You see, the mercy of God is far above any other thing you can think. Listen to the person that offended you. Listen to his heart or her. Let him or her be able to express himself or herself to tell you the reason why such thing happened the way it happened. And as you listen, compassion will surely come because he is not an, an animal. I don't think that anybody wants to live in strife. The reason people live in strife is because they don't know how to reconcile. The reason people quarrel and they still alive because they don't know how to go about it to bring the situation back to normal. And they start to live a deceptive life. But if you initiate such idea to reconcile according to the word of God, make sure you cooperate to see the end that there is peace. Then you become a child of God because that's what the word of God says. The children of God, they make peace. Number four, the next step. Admit and confess your own fault if you have. You see, at times, many of us don't want to admit our own fault. I told someone recently, I said, look, title or whatever does not make you right all the time. Mostly to women of God. We think we are right all the time, but that is not true. And most of us, when we know that we are wrong, instead of us acknowledging that we are wrong and say, look, brother, my sister, forgive me for what I did. I'm sorry. What do we do? We use our title, our position to cover it up. But when you go for that table of reconciliation, if you know that you were wrong in some area, that the person, brother, sister, I'm sorry, in this area, I was also wrong. But the reason I came here is for us to reconcile because there is blessing and reconciliation. Both of us will have the ministry of reconciliation. And I know it's a shame for two of us in the body of Christ. The world will be looking at us. That's why they don't come to church. I come here to restore that situation that we can flow together once again. Somebody else said, Pastor Victor, you said, yes. You know why I said that? I have been in that class before. But I'm redeemed from it. And I'm, God will continue to redeem me from it. I want to live successfully. I want to live in the blessings of the Lord. And I don't want anything to hinder me. Many of us, we are ashamed to say who we are. Many of us, we are ashamed to acknowledge our own fault. And that's, that's why we are living in bondage. I have lived in that situation that you cannot acknowledge your own fault. And you want to cover it up with your position. It doesn't work. You will hinder the blessings of God from flowing into your life. But wherever you acknowledge your own mistake and you confess it before the person says, so sign of humility, I am wrong here. Forgive me also. Amen. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3 to 5. Hallelujah. And why beholdest thou the mood that is in thy brother's heart, but considereth not the being that is in that own time. That is what we do. Most of all, we see the trouble. We see the mystics. We have a list of mystics of other people. But yet, God is having a bunch of books of our own mystics. And until we try, we, we consider or reconsider our own mystics, first of all, remove the, I, I told someone recently, he was blaming this man, a man of God was blaming someone. This person, he says, see that, this and that. And I look at him, I said, you, if God stands before you now, 
So you have never seen or what a word will tell me. See, nobody is perfect. Put yourself in order before you point the finger. I told him yesterday that if every believer is putting himself in order or herself in order, if we are checking ourselves before we point finger to other people, I think church would have been a home for many people. Because if I can put myself in order, you put yourself in order. Here. You know, there is nothing to put in order any longer. But our mistake is we try to put other people in order without being in order ourselves. And that is a problem. Because they are seeing that we are not in order and we try to put them in order. Then they rebel. They see that we make mistakes, but we don't acknowledge our mistakes. That is why they don't obey. But whereby we humble ourselves, deal with ourselves, we come and they can see the fruit of God in us. Then we accept our correction. If a man said it's not a sin and the Bible said it's a lie. Amen. Then after you have acknowledged your own fault, both of you should attack the problem, not the person. And I repeat that. Attack the problem. You acknowledge the problem. Say, brother, this problem exists for you are not a problem. Neither am I the problem. Is the devil. And we are not going to give him space because he is trying to hinder the kingdom. What a shame to come to a city and you see this pastor, this minister, don't read this and this and that. For me, I, I consider these days babies' behavior. Because before God, it is stinking and it's smelling. And that is why we must confront it. See, you are not a problem, brother. The Bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood. I am not a problem. This situation was caused by the enemy. And now we recognize it. Therefore, we are dealing with it now because we want the kingdom. Advance. I have done that. Someone called me one day and said, yeah, I was in the meeting of the pastors, and this pastor and this pastor talked so bad about it, but I don't know what you have done to them. I said, you know, so I don't have not done anything. If I've done anything to them, they better let me know. I said, give me their telephone number, let me call them, and I'm going to go and talk to them. And the Lord said, wait, pray first. And I prayed. About two or three days, and the Lord said, okay, go. And I made an appointment with two of them. I went to the first one and said, Brother, they said, you have, This is what you said about me. What is the problem? I said, My brother, there is no problem. This, this, this person told me this, this person told me. But for me and you, we don't have any problem. I said, I want, I'm real. I want, I want to. If there is anything I have done that you know I have done, forgive me. I don't know anything. But if there is anything I have done, let me know. And I'm ready to repent of it. He told me, no, you have not done anything personally to me, but this is what this person said that you did. Not even you. Someone did it, this and that. And I said, okay, I'm going to him to go and ask him. And I went to him. I stayed in his office for more than one hour. He called and he is sick. I should come back another day. Those are the things that disappoints me at times. And when Tim, I came back another day, Stayed for over, over an hour. The secretary came and said, hey, he's very busy somewhere. He said, hey, you drop your telephone number. He will call you, make a new appointment. And it's now two years. I'm still waiting for the call. Can you imagine that? And these are men of God preaching the gospel. But yet, disobeying what Jesus said. And the reason he doesn't want to confront that issue because he knew that I have done nothing wrong. But myself, I'm praying for him that God forgive him. If that is the true gospel, because I've not found it here, that your brother came to see you because he had that. You said something about him. And he said, okay, come next time. He came next time. He said, drop your telephone. I will call you two years. You have not called. But if we call God, we want God to answer us immediately. This is what I call manipulation and deception. And it's time we come out from that baby clothing and the men that see the truth, we talk about the truth. I like to confront issue and deal with it. I've called the pastor when I said, brother, this is what I had, and I want to deal with it with you, because I don't like it. 
He didn't want to do. I said, if you don't want to deal with this issue, don't ever talk about love publicly because if you do, I am going to stand up like Jesus and I'm going to rebuke you. And when he saw that mail, he called me and said, come, 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 come on. And I went and we dealt with the issue. I went forgot about it. Why should it be a current issue that are hurting people? God didn't say, come on. God said, be with it. But before you do it, like I said, pray that God will heal you and give you wisdom on how to speak. You know what? A soft word turn it away right. Proverbs 15 says so. If you have prayed, God will give you wisdom. God will put soft word into your mind, into your spirit. And when you get to that place, you know how to speak like a learned tongue. Amen. Hallelujah. The next thing, if the person is deceptive, if the person is not sincere, God will show you. But if the person is not sincere, don't create it. Don't be an enemy. Forgive him. Pray for him and let him go. I told it to people. Deceptive people are very difficult to deal with. But don't hold it against him. Otherwise, you can hinder your blessing. Let him know whether you see him face to face or you are right. It's something else. Write him a letter. Send it to him. Say, look, brother, I am forgiving you with all my heart. But for this and this reason, I can't walk with you. I've done that. It is not compulsory you must walk with everybody, but it is compulsory you must love everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go for it. Do all you can. You know why? Let me give you the reason. Let's go to the book of 1 Corinthians. A deceptive person, a person who is not genuinely a Christian, that trouble has, something has happened between you and him. You want to reconcile, you want to make peace. Do that. But when you know that this person is cannot be trusted and is not ready to change, don't force yourself into that relationship. First Corinthians 15, verse 33. Hallelujah. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. You see, when you start to walk together with someone who is corrupt, who is deceptive, before you know it, you yourself become deceptive. Before you know it, you yourself become corrupt. Before you know it, you yourself become a sinner. Because that is who he is. And I always tell you, it is easy to pull you down when you are up, down to this place. But at the same time, don't hold it against you. How do you know you're not holding it against him? How clear is your conscience towards him anytime you hear about him? Do all you can. When you have done all this, even at that table of reconciliation, if it is possible, take the wrong. I'm not saying appeasing the situation because already you have opened the issue. You know what the problem is. But in order to bring that reconciliation to pass, do all you can to be humble. For the sake of Jesus, accept wrong if possible. After you have said it with you. Say, brother, sister, it doesn't matter what happened. I accept you. Everything you said. As far as there is peace. I've been able to deal and show you the truth. Show you what happened, why it happened. But I don't want to leave this place without us reconciling this issue because we have been given the ministry of reconciliation and God is not pleased if we continue to walk like this. I love you and the reason you are able to say that is because you have already prayed and God have healed you. So whether he agree or not, the wound or the heart is no longer there. The reason you are there is to see reconciliation and don't leave that table until there is restoration and reconciliation. Amen. Do that. When you do that, you will see the hands of God. You will see the blessings of God. You will see God moving your life because you are the maker of peace. And God is looking for makers of peace because God makes peace. 
He said, when your ways are pleasing to you, he makes you are able to live at peace with you. God doesn't want enemies among his children. He wants us to live at peace. So do all you can. I see people fighting and talking and writing letters against themselves and all what not. I said, I have been in this class. I don't want to be in that class any longer. I just want to enjoy the blessings so God. I always tell God, Lord, I thank you for what you are doing in my life. I thank you for your favor. Whatever thing that will take me away from where you have positioned me and carrying me today, please let me know that I can run away far away. One of those things the Lord has said is try. Do all you can to run away from strife. Amen. God bless every one of you. Most of you, wherever you are watching, may God bless you. Those of you watching in Pakistan, in Europe, wherever you are watching, may God richly bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. The program has started again, like I said. And by Friday, next tomorrow, we'll be having a wonderful time. I'm bringing out a topic from my new book. Oh, I want to teach on that book with all my heart. I'm bringing out a topic to show you how you can live successfully. Men that have lived successfully, what are the characters that make them to live successfully? I'll be teaching on that one of them, one of the chapters on Friday. And it's going to be awesome. Tell people to be. I believe that you want to live successfully. And get ready to buy that book when it comes out because it is going to be, I to someone, it's going to be a hot cake. I know. And I was writing it. After I wrote it, I read it. I said, God, this is hot cake. He said, yes. That is why I asked you to write it with testimonies and with photos. Amen. You can have what you say. It's one of the chapters. You can have what you say if you live by his word. Amen. God bless you richly. And thank you so much once again.